All right, guys, it's Jason here from Head First again, and today we're going to talk about relay power supplies, DC power supplies for relays. Now, I'm going to do one of my uh, iPad schematic kind of things, right? And these videos have proven to be relatively popular, um, some good comments on them. So people appreciate them, so I'm happy to keep doing them. Um, I'll remind you at the end of the video, and I'll say it now, if you've got other topics you want me to cover in the style, leave a comment in the description box, and um, I will get to it eventually. So, uh, to the screen, right? So I'm to my iPad now. So the last time we did this, I um, was talking about using relays to switch in different gain stages, right? And so here's my drawing from the last video. I'll put a link to the video here right now so you can uh, go and reference that. But the most common question I got um, from guys was, well, okay, so if we're going to set up a DC supply, how do we how do we do it, right? A lot of the old amps, if you're looking to particularly modern old Marshall or whatever, right, they don't actually have a 12-volt rail ready to go inside the amp that you can tap into. Okay, so I've drawn out a few options here where I've put a few headings in that we can actually kind of discuss, right? So here's number one. Use a low voltage wine on a power transformer. This is the most convenient way, but often the most difficult to access because it requires a power transformer to have a special wind on it for this purpose. Okay, um, so if I draw this out, if we just look at the power transformer, all right, and I'll just kind of draw it like this, right? So there's our kind of our iron core. This is the primary wind. So imagine this is zero volts and this is, you know, 120 if you're in the US or say 240 if you're here in Australia or the UK. And then on the secondary side, we have a number of different winds here that are used by the amplifier for different things you know so you might have your this is your high voltage um, secondaries here for the b plus you'll always have a filament wind right for the heaters and this will be you know 6.3 volts ac center tapped now um you can get power transformers um that have an additional wind on them for this express purpose, right? To create a kind of low voltage supply that you can use for relays and often for DC heaters as well, right? So if you look at the designs that I have um, with Head First, this is exactly what I have, right? I have custom specified transformers made by Haber who um, will wind these transformers to my specification and they all have DC heaters in them. So when you have 12 volt DC heaters in the amplifier, you can use that same supply to power relays. So what you would have is an additional wind here. You can imagine, right, I'm just kind of, you know, imagine the whole thing comes down. And this might be like, say, 14 volts AC. Okay, and then what you do with that is you would um, bridge rectify it. Okay, you use a bridge rectifier. Um, and you would then, off that, create, um, you know, create a, uh, a supply that is 12 volts DC. And this is, you know, zero volts or ground. And the way you would do that is if you can, I'm not going to draw out a bridge rectifier, right? And you can just look on those on the internet. You can see what they are. But it's basically four rectifier diodes in a configuration. And you only ground it, right? So I'm going to draw ground in here. You want to ground it on the DC side of the bridge rectifier. A good rule with this stuff, right? Don't ever ground a bridge rectifier on both sides. You have to choose whether you're going to ground it on the primary side or the secondary side. You can't do both. Bad things will happen if you try. Okay, so the way that you get 12 volts DC here that you can use, as I said, 
you know, for DC heaters and for your relay supply is that if you bridge rectify 14 volts AC, you're not going to get you're not going to get 12 volts DC, right? You're going to get like you know 16 or 17 volts DC, and it's going to have a massive ripple on it still. So you've got to put this through smoothing caps like an electrolytic you know capacitor that'll smooth out the AC into DC. And if you're using if you're going to do DC heaters with this, you have, you need to use a voltage regulator. Okay, the best way to do it, 12 volts, so 7812 voltage regulator. And you can do this stuff, so I have one of the PCBs here. This is a, you can get these on the Evolve DIY store. And these little PCBs that I've designed, I put these together for my own mods, all right? And then subsequently kind of went, oh yeah, these will be cool to put in the online store to allow others to grab them as well. So this little guy has um the ability to take in a low voltage wine like this from a power transformer uh, it has an inline bridge rectifier it has a space here for an electrolytic cap to smooth it and then a nice uh, big heat sink here for your voltage regulator and what you'll get out of the back of this is um, a high current 12 volt dc supply that you can use right for DC heaters and relays. Now, when you look at specifications here for power transformer that you're going to use for DC, you need to be aware of the current supply handling of the PT. So, you know, something like this, you, you want two amps, two to three amps, right? If you're going to do DC heaters, if you're just using it for relays only, you need hardly anything you know 200 milliamps maybe all right and we'll talk about that in a second when i talk about kind of like um this you know standalone pts that you can add into your amplifier for this purpose okay so that's number one you've got a power transformer that's got a low voltage wind already on it here's number two which is a switch mode power supply so something like this this is the little recom brick right this thing, uh, let me get it around the right way. <laughs> can't get it, can't get the thing to fake. There we go. Recom. This little brick here takes uh, your mains AC on one side and puts out 12 volts DC on the other. And it's powerful enough to do DC heaters with. And you can see, right, it's not, it's not big at all. We also have a printed circuit board for this. You can see it's like it's got uh, PCB mount legs on it. So we have I don't have one here with me, but you have a we have a PCB that this thing will sit on to allow you to mount it into the chassis super easy. So with this guy, you're just gonna treat it like a black box, right? And all you're gonna put into it is your literally your uh, your wall AC and it'll run anywhere between eighty to two hundred and fifty volts. AC so these are universal right you can use them anywhere in the world and you just have that switch right so in, the, in your amplifier when you turn the power switch on you'll then send power to this the recom and then you'll have your 12 volts DC here and zero volts and you ground it on this side okay it's one of the questions I always get um, on this guy where do I ground you want to ground it on the DC side and all will be good, right? Then you can use that. These are high current, right? So you can do DC heaters with this thing, as I said, and and your um uh and your relays. Now, if you you don't have a low voltage one on your PT, this is probably the best choice. Because if you're doing a high gain mod, doing DC heaters is always useful as well. Okay, option three is you have a separate power transformer. Now, this is something that I used to do quite a lot before I started to use these guys. And so, you know, you've got your normal power transformer, which is there in the amp as stock, you know, your, your standard Marshall 2203, 2204, whatever it is that you're modding. And you can buy, as I said here, a Hammond. If you look at my, you're going to have a look at my Build Basics 
Power Transformer video. I'll put a link to that now as well. I actually show the Hammond models, the you know the uh, the model codes that you can get either in the United States or in countries like Australia or the UK where we're 240. Um, and what these power transformers are, are basically you have it's just a very simple PT right where you have mains on one side so this is your mains here whatever whatever it is happens to be let's let's pretend we're in the US here so this is 120 AC and then uh, one wind out the back right and it might be center tapped or not let's just let's just assume it is and so this will be zero and this might be you know you know nine and nine or something like that you know maybe it's six and six I can't quite remember but essentially what you end up here with you know is like an 18 volt in this case AC supply at two amps for example that you can then bridge rectify smooth and then put into a voltage regulator like a 7812 regulator and you've got nice steady um, high current DC supply which you can use for heaters and for your relays now you can actually get um, low current ones as well so in Australia we have a local electronic store called JCAR I'll write it here JCAR and they actually have um, hobby kind of little Trans power transformers that you can get right so they have a power transformer that looks just like this one here that I've drawn it's center tapped and I think it's 9 volts 9 volts and it's only at 150 milliamp supply so the power transformer it's about the same size as this it's really small right um, so because it's low current doesn't doesn't need to doesn't need to be this is fine for relays only right you cannot use a power transformer like that and do 12 volt heaters not going to work okay number four um and i see this done it's quite common in the diy world and that is using the filament supply of your power transformer so this is where you know here i'm going to draw the pt again here here's our primary and then on the secondary side you know we have our high current um, 6.3 volt AC obviously center tapped right filament supply which is used for your AC heaters now I see people tap into these and put like you know so off that goes and and is like you know um, using uh, it's been used for a filament supply for your power tra uh, your power tubes and your preamp tubes and then people tap off it with a bridge rectifier um, and then into their uh, you know and they rectify it and create mm, maybe through a dropping resistor or whatever so like a 5 volt DC supply for relays now I advise against doing this because you get into problems with grounding all right so in your heater supply here you will ground the center tap as I've drawn here now as I said earlier in this video you can't ground on both sides of the bridge rectifier bad things happen if you do that right so you can imagine like you know this is connected over here into the bridge rectifier and uh, that means that the ground here our negative right which I'll just put a circle around here put a circle around the positive this is now you can't ground that as well so it's floating okay so we'll leave that it's floating and the issue arises with a floating DC supply like this when someone then puts a foot switch on it right and then they drill a hole in the back of the amp and they put a you know a, a TS or a TRS quarter inch jack in the back of the amp now if you just have a fully self-contained DC circuit there it's kind of okay right but what what inevitably happens is is that is that someone connects that foot switch to 
an alternate an alternate ground point. So let's say you're using a Line 6 Helix HX FX, something like that, that has amp switching capability built into it. Well, that's a separate ground, right? So all of a sudden, when you activate that uh, that ground on your for your relay, you've introduced a ground onto the other side of the bridge rectifier here, and unpredictable things can happen. So my advice, do not use the filament supply for your relays, right? Use one of these other options here. Get a separate PT for it. Use one of those switch mode power supplies, the Recom, um, or you might have a power transformer that has the low voltage secondary already built in. If anyone can think of alternative methods, other ways to do it, drop it in the comments. We'll keep the conversation going. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover in this style, let me know in the comments and I will get to it. I'll see you next time, guys.